Right now, Aviva and I will walk you through our app wheel, which is one of the tools that we've developed within the mobile learning curriculum. As you can see here, our app wheel is organized as concentric circles. In the very middle, we have categories that we assumed were things that college students would have to be able to do to be successful in higher education. Uh, our areas are studying, writing, organization, and reading. As we move our way out within those areas, we have subtopics. For instance, in studying, we have gathering information, memory, mind mapping, and self-regulation. Within writing, we have note-taking, recording lectures, speech to text, and word processing. And then within organization, we have reminders and to-do lists, calendars, and digital storage. And within reading, we have text-to-speech, finding digital textbooks, PDF readers, scanning. What we've done here originally is create the framework, the conceptual framework for students. And then after that, we worked with students and faculty to gather the actual apps that they were using. Um, Viva will walk us through what it has been like as a student and how she has contributed to this version of the app wheel. So a big part of this as a student was kind of seeing what I prefer but then also being aware that what works for me and my profile doesn't necessarily work for another student because everyone's unique in themselves. So a lot of it was having multiple people collab on it and bring different ideas and different apps in, um, going over each section specifically and saying, I use this, this is what I like. We've heard really good feedback about this one and that one. Um, and just really gathering the apps that we think work the best but also knowing that this app wheel changes every year or so as students change what they use and as new apps come in and old apps come out. A big thing we did this past year was going through all the apps and seeing which ones still like existed <laughs> um, and which ones were still being used. There were some apps that I remember looking back and you're like, I don't, I don't think I've ever heard of this app or, or it's not even available on iPad or iOS anymore and kind of changing it. So a lot of it is being able to adapt and make this as accessible as possible to so many people, which is one of the reasons that the version um, we have online is clickable so that it will take you directly to the app to download. It speeds up the process of getting those apps and making everything easier for students. Do it and click any app you want and it will take you directly to the Apple store where you could purchase it. That's great. So tell us a little bit, Aviva, about what it was like to build this. It was really amazing. It was honestly um, a lot of fun collaborating and a little bit of debating about what apps should stay and go um, and kind of almost like justifying apps, which I think make it better because then you really think about how the app can be used in multiple places. So you'll notice there's some apps that are in multiple sections because they have multiple functionalities. Um, there's also some in here that maybe aren't like a specific app, like closed captioning, but that's important to know that that exists and can be used as a tool in multiple ways. So it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot about different apps and how they work and what makes them unique and unlike other apps, what makes that specific app more accessible. So it was a really amazing process. Could you walk us through, Aviva, what it would be like if a student were to come in and you were working with that student for the first time and you were looking to support that student to be able to customize his or her iPad to make it um, as best suited to that student as you possibly could. Yeah, the, the first thing I'm gonna ask them is what, what they're currently struggling the most with, okay. what they want their iPad to be doing for them that it's not currently doing. And from there, I would talk about maybe what section that fits in. So for a lot of students, taking notes can be a really big task, keeping up with the professor, making sure you're writing things down, so for that, I would go to writing. Uh -huh. Once I direct them to the writing section, we go a little bit more in depth about what type of writing they're doing. Is it 
writing essays and they're finding that their thoughts get ahead of them before they can type it all down or they just don't like whatever writing app they're using, then I would tell them to take a look at speech to text or word processing for writing papers or long essays. If they said it was more writing in the classroom, we'd take a little bit more look at note taking. And then I'd ask them if they record their lectures. A really big tool that a lot of students can do is record the lectures. It helps them get more information. If they miss information, they can listen back to it, fill in the blank. Um, and it can just be a really great guide to listen back onto that recording. So if that's specific, I would direct them to lecture recording. Within lecture recording, my personal favorite app was Notability, which we have a whole video on. Um, there's also other notes like um, note taking express, which would be if they want to record their lectures and have someone else take it. There's Otter. And if they just want to record and they want their notes handwritten, they could do voice memo and just have the recording separate from their actual physical notes. Really nice. So what Aviva did there, and you can see now popping up on the side of the screen, is the set framework. And she walked us through in her verbal description of how she would work with a student, how we would move from asking about the student's learning profile, thinking about what environment the student is working in, what tasks the student is doing, and then only then do we get to the tools. So um, Joy Zavala's set framework really focuses on um, the big picture before you find the solution. And often we find that students want the solution first, <laughs> and so do educators. And we want to have it be done with as quickly as possible. But in our case, we've learned that um, to have it be done with is only to introduce more difficulty later. Um, walking the students through the SAP framework really helps them to understand how they learn and then be reflective as learners and with the support of our peer mobile learning tutors to think about what the environment, who they are as learners, and what the task is before then they pick a tool. And hopefully then that template of um, being metacognitive about your learning transfers to other learning environments.